welcome back to Britnet's OKC. I'm Brittany. Um, this podcast is about knitting and spinning and other crafty things. Uh, I live in Oklahoma City and I knit a lot. Um, if you're new here, welcome. If you are returning, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully this isn't too boring. <laughs> um, I have a lot of whips and acquisitions this week, so I'm just going to kind of do them together and then talk about like what I mostly what I did last weekend because last weekend was a very uh, yarny weekend <laughs> full of like knitting stuff, um, mostly on Saturday. But um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of stuff over the past few weeks, uh, and I've bought a lot of stuff, but I think I'm on a break with buying things until after Christmas because I have way too many projects to do and um, I have some holiday presents to finish. If I can get them finished, we'll see. <laughs> so I'll just jump into it. Um, I think on the last episode, I kind of teased that I had bought something kind of nice. And um, this is what I bought. Uh, I didn't think about not having it open before I started this, but I'll close it really fast and show you. And then I'll open it and tell you what whip I have inside. <laughs> um, I've been looking at this bag for a long time. Uh, it's made by Hohe and Co. And uh, she makes beautiful bags. I think her name is Hohe Locatelli. Um, yeah, but she sells bags under Hohe & Co. So I saw this bag for the first time on Knit Ink podcast. I think that Petra has one. And it was the coolest, like most beautiful bag I've ever, I'd ever seen. So I had to buy one eventually. I waited for this color to come back. Um, this is the Ball Bag, B-A-U-L. And it's made from, I think, uh, waxed suede. So it has a little handle on it so you can carry it like this and then it's a rectangle and this is the regular size one um i think she has been making bigger ones and i'm waiting to see if i can get my hands on one of those um, but it has a really nice clasp and closure and there's a little hokey logo um and then it opens like this and then it kind of opens like a bento box or not a bento box like a kind of like a takeout box and it has little snaps right here and then it opens up like this and you can put your project in it and it just lays flat and doesn't roll around and stuff which I I really appreciate the bags that have flat bottoms on them because it really sucks if you're knitting and then your bag falls over. <laughs> it's not a fun time. Um, let me get this out of here. I think last time I showed a swatch that I made because I hate swatches. I hate doing swatches, but I, I have been doing them, which is good because I really, I, I understand the importance of doing a swatch. It's just, you know, you're so excited to cast on your project and then you do the swatch and it's like you haven't made any progress at all, but you have because you're, you've taken like a big step in starting your project correctly and coming out with like a really good end product. Um, so I swatched for the sweater last time. It's been a while because um, this is the first color work sweater I've ever done. And I've only ever done one other project with color work in it, um, which was I made some Bernie mittens for my friend. He really wanted some, so I made them. And uh, that was my first time doing color work and they came out okay. Um, they were flat, they weren't really bumpy, so I thought great. And then I watched some kind of video and someone was talking about doing color work and how to 
do it the right way and you know what they found works best and everything so this is the uh andrew maori pink velvet i always forget the name because this obviously isn't pink <laughs> um i changed the color so i picked green so this is i've got the color work done and i just separated for the sleeves so this is the the I wish I had a better way to show this. So this is the yoke and I finished the color work. And for the first part of it, so from probably the top to about here, I was doing it with one, I was holding yarn on one hand and I just kept switching. But the, the, yarn, the yarn cakes kept getting like all tangled together. So every like 12 stitches or so, I had to like pull it so it would spin around and unravel um and it was getting really tedious and it was taking a really long time so i last weekend i was like you know i really want to get the color work part of the sweater done because the rest of it will be like smooth sailing just stockinette and um so i i was like forget doing it the right way i'm not doing that anymore and i um, put one collar on each finger and knit continental and um, English style and it went a lot better and it was a lot smoother I don't know if you, you'll be able to see it but this part is a little puffy but not so puffy that it's not going to flatten out I think it will flatten out when I um, wash it and block it but this part is perfectly flat <laughs> So I really should have just been doing it, doing it the way that I wanted to the whole time. Um, but it's fine. I learned a lesson. Hopefully it all blocks out all right. The floats aren't very short. So there's my floats. I know. Yeah, there's my floats. I think they look good, especially for my first, my first color work sweater. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. It's so pretty and it looks even better on camera and in really good light. So I'm excited. Uh, I just have to keep knitting away at it. <laughs> this is kind of my, one of my long haul projects. Like I know it, it's not gonna get done anytime soon, but I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, uh, oh, the colors are, it's from 316 Dye Works in Wichita, or Dye, not Dye Works, 316 Dye Studio in Wichita, Kansas, uh, which is like two and a half hours from here. Um, my brother lives there, so, um, which I, I didn't know that this, that this dyer was in Wichita until um, Fiber Christmas in July in Tulsa. Um, but I really love her yarn. Her colors are really pretty. Um, I'll, I have some more of her yarn to show you in a little bit. But um, the dark green is spruce, and then the lighter green is olive sock yarn. And this is just fingering, fingering weight yarn. And then the olive is the sock yarn. So, and the spruce has light, like a medium green and dark green in it. So it's kind of not all one color here, but I think that the olive really pops out. And she helped me pick out the colors uh, at Fiber Christmas. So she's super nice and you'll, you'll understand the extent to which she is super nice when I tell you my mishap with a knit along <laughs> that I'm doing. Um, yeah, so that's that whip and that, this purchase of this bag that I'm really obsessed with. <laughs> if it didn't have so many clips on it, I think this is what I would take my knitting to work in, but um, I have to go through security and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> it's not convenient to have to open a lot. So what next? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, I guess I'll do, I'll do my other 316 dye studio purchase um so i'm doing their 316 dye studio is doing a um a knit along it's like a cozy it's 
called the Cozy Cal. Um, so it's all about like sweater weather, sweaters. So she picked like four, I think four patterns to do. Um, and then you could do pre-orders for the yarn for your Cozy Cal uh, sweater that you're gonna make. So I did that, but I got too excited and I wasn't reading the pattern correctly. So I wasn't looking at the, the amounts the right way, which later I found out it wasn't just me who was looking at them wrong, so that's good. Uh, but it's the Douglas Cardi by Andrea Mowry. And the pattern is written out really clearly and stuff, but the the amounts, I think there are like 10 sizes or something. And the amounts on them are all listed out in like grams and then yards and then meters, but it's like this long string of numbers. <laughs> and I am not a numbers person. Probably the best I am at math is with all this knitting stuff. And I, I confused myself, so. <laughs> Um, I got confused and I did do a sweater pre-order, but I only ordered half the yarn that I needed. And I realized it when it came in the mail and I opened, I was like really excited and I opened up the package and then I was like, that doesn't seem like enough yarn to make a cardigan. And it's not. <laughs> so I had to message Jenny from 316 Dyeworks and be like, um, I messed up. I'm really sorry. I made a huge mistake. And um, when you have time, can you please, please, please <laughs> um, just make me another order? Uh, and she is. She she was super nice about it. And luckily, she has a sense of humor ab about it that I just read the pattern wrong <laughs> and totally messed up. Um, but uh, I... I carried this to brunch earlier. So I have half the yarn in this bag and half the yarn in another bag. Yeah. Let me see. So I made a swatch for this sweater. I did make a swatch like a, like a good person. Um, this bag's from Holly Jolly Fiber Company. Um, I think it's really cute with the little honeycomb and the bees. Um, she's in Oklahoma City too. So you should check her out in the inside. It's also honeycomb. Uh, this wasn't a recent purchase, but it was earlier this year. But yeah, uh, I'm dropping yarn on the floor. <laughs> this is going well, isn't it? Um, I did make a swatch. So I chose uh, to make mine in tweed colors and autumn colors. So it's like a super autumn inspired tweed cardigan, Douglas Cardi. I'm really excited. Um, so this is my swatch. This is in the color Fool's Gold and it's super tweedy. Um, this is the cake. Oh, it's stuck. <laughs> this is the cake. I think it's such a beautiful like golden kind of like dark. It has brown in it, not just the nips, but the um, it has like a brown leaf tinge to it. Thought it was really pretty, so I got that one. And then cranberry. So I'll try to hold all the colors up. Um, and then I got spruce, which is the same green as the one I'm using for my pink velvet sweater. So there's spruce and then And then this is rust. And then they look so nice together. If I can hold them all up. Well, if I dropped, if I dropped the swatch, I can do this easier. <laughs> so here's the colors that I'm going to do the stripes out of. And then um, I'm doing the button band and the neck and everything in birch wood, which it, I'm dropping everything because it's attached. So that's, these are the colors for my Douglas Cardi. 
I'm so excited. It looks super autumn-y. And I started this Friday night, I guess. Yeah, because I stayed up really late. I am a person who goes to sleep by 10 o'clock, usually every night. And I stayed up later because I was trying to cast on stitches and it was a, I did a long tail cast on, but I think I did a long tail tubular cast on. I'm not sure. I think I did that one though. Um, and I uh, didn't, admit, I didn't make the tail long enough the first time. So I had to undo it. And it was, it's like 206 stitches. So I think I got to like 150. And then I was like, oh no, the end of my tail is not long enough. So I had to take it out and my husband went to bed and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna stay up and just get this cast on. That way I don't have to worry about the number of stitches again for a while. Um, I just wanted to get a start on it. And uh, I think I stayed up and did like two rows just to get a little, a little head start for the next day. And I've been, this is all I've been knitting on all weekend. Um, it's ribbing though, and I really don't like ribbing. It looks nice, but I really, it takes a long time. And I, Norwegian pearl too, and it still takes a long time. So um, this is what birchwood looks like knit in a button band. It's super nice, but the button band is like three and a half inches. So this is only like a little bit over two inches. So I still have an inch and a half of button band to do before I can start doing the pretty striped <laughs> colors. So I really want to get to the stripes. Um, that's my goal. Um, before I put all this back, I will tell you about um, last weekend, I, uh, I took a spinning class, which I'll talk about later. And I also met up with my knitting group and we went to Yarnatopia, which is on the south side of the city. And they were having um, Yarn Adventure truck was there. So I got to see Katie again and um, I bought some stuff, but I've been buying a lot of yarn lately, which you will see after I, you know, in a little bit when I get to it. Um, so I told, I told my knitting group, I was like, okay, so I know that um, Yarnatopia is having its uh, anniversary sale. I think it's been open like five years. And also on this day, Yarn Adventure Truck is going to be there. And I'm only allowed to buy yarn for our knit along that we're doing. And they were like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but okay, okay. And I, di I didn't just buy the yarn because I can't be trusted. <laughs> but I did get something that I had seen the last time Yarn Adventure Truck was here. And that is this awesome bag from uh, Black Pearl Magic. Yeah, Black Pearl, Ma Black Pearl Magic. In, uh, she's in Baltimore. So it has tapes all over it. It has like tapes from like when I was a teenager. <laughs> now y'all know how old I am. Um, so I, I love this bag. It has, it feels like it's like waxed canvas bottom and it's super like structural. So it folds, you can fold it on the side and everything, but it's like got a, a flat bottom on it, which I love. Um, oh, I forgot. So I I also bought another bag from Hohi when I bought that um, ball. And it's just, it's a tote bag. Um, I've been using it as my purse because it's like a short tote like this and it's easy to get all my stuff out of it and I can fit my knitting bag in there too. So it, except this one, <laughs> but I've been carrying it around. I'll show it to you guys um, probably next time because I left it in the other room. Uh, but so I got this bag and I love it so much. It has really nice handles 
has a, the bottom that's flat. Uh, it has a drawstring that's super handy. And in the inside, it has like big pockets. So I have all the bands for my yarn in there and it has, uh, I don't know if you can see, you can kind of see at that angle, big pockets and there's two of them. So there's one there and one there. Yeah, I love it so much and it looks cool because it has tapes. So that's fun. That's what I'm um, mostly keeping my Douglas Cardi in. Well, half of the yarn anyway. <laughs> because uh, Jenny will send me the other half of the yarn later. <laughs> I still can't believe I did that. It was so dumb. I was just like, oh no, like we were getting ready to go out and meet a friend for dinner. And I was frantically texting her being like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm really dumb. I can't believe I did this because I usually think about it, but I, I think I got like so excited and I wanted to make sure I got the colors that I wanted and stuff. So, and I just, I read the pattern wrong. And I think that I, I think that I was looking at the pattern. I was looking at my cart online and I thought, okay, I'll add the colors and I'll make sure that I have the right color, the right amount of colors. Cause I didn't want to leave one out. <laughs> So I, I'll make sure I have the right amount of colors and then I will go back in my car and I'll change the numbers um, to the correct amount of yards. Um, so I get the right amount of yards. And I think I did that and then I, for, I forgot to go back in the car and change the numbers. Um, so I did not end up with the right amount of yarn that I needed. So that happened. <laughs> um, also Katie from uh, yarn adventure put this little this little tag on the bag too I thought it was cute it has the yarn truck on it and it says this bag belongs to a knitter from yarn adventure so it's cute I love it so I bought this bag on the truck and then I bought this yarn it's already caked up oh I, I also bought this little sticker because I thought it was adorable. I don't know what I'm gonna put it on. I've just been like propping it up back here on my shelf. Um, but it was too cute. Had to buy it. <laughs> that happens, doesn't it? Too cute, gotta buy it. <laughs> so also um, this bag that I'm keeping, my knit along, hat knit along. So my knitting group is doing a hat knit along which is fun. And so I'm keeping this yarn, this project in here for the knit along. This bag is also from Holly Jolly Fiber Company, it has stripes on it. And then the inside is polka dots. Yeah, I like it. It also has a flat bottom on it. Amazing. Um, here's the tags. So also in the yarn truck, I did buy the yarn for the hat and along. So I bought these two colors, super plum color, and then this like gray, brownish gray color. And they are from Seventh Floor Yarn. And this is the same, I bought this yarn before on this exact base and everything. Um, I have a few skeins of it to make my mom a sweater, but I hadn't used it yet, but I really love it. It's so nice. It's um, DK Yak from Seventh Floor Yarn. And here's their, I don't know if you can see their logo, um, but it's like a, a building. I think they're in New York and it's a mother daughter dyer, dyeing company. And this is the DK Yak and it's 60% Superwash Merino, 20% Yak. 20% silk. Yeah. So it's, it's super lush yarn, you guys. It's so nice. Um, I love knitting on it. I got a lot done. It's so squishy and just like 
just like soft. <laughs> um, so I'm knitting the blood thistle hat. I think the I think the designer is named Faye Kennington. I think if I have that wrong, I'll put the correct one in the thing below. Um, so this is some more color work. <laughs> I'm just like addicted to color work right now. So the blood thistle hat has a really pretty thistle pattern on it. You can kind of see the bottom with the leaves and stuff here. My stitch marker is not in the way. So this is what this hat looks like so far. <laughs> it wants to curl up. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. I love the color. Oh, it's just so pretty. I'll get closer. You can see. Yeah, I just love it so much. And my floats are looking good, I think. From far away, it looks like the outside of the hat, which is good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm knitting on this, and this hat's going to be super nice. It's for me. <laughs> um, I just can't stop touching it. <laughs> oh, no, I dropped some stitches. That figures. Hold on a second. I got to grab these before I lose them. That was dumb. Ah, come back. No, come back, come back. Uh oh, I think I dropped one. Oh, maybe I didn't. Yes, I definitely did. <laughs> okay, well, I'll fix that later. Hopefully I remember. Oh man. Yeah, I'll just have to remember to fix it. Um, I'll actually, I won't put that back in the bag. And I'll see what I did, what I messed up. I am finished recording. <laughs> that was silly. Um, yeah, so I did that and I went in the yarn adventure truck and bought a lot of stuff. Um, I think I took some, but did I take some footage? No, I just took a picture. I'll see if Daniel will put the picture up in here. And then I went into Yarnatopia and I bought some Katrinkles tags. And they say hand, oh, they all say handmade on them, but there's a few different sizes of tag. They're like leather tags that you can put in the backs. Well, you can put them anywhere in inside your sweater. Um, but I think, I thought they would be handy. So you would know which side was the back side and which side was the front without like trying to hold it up in exactly the right way. Um, yeah, I think, I think they will be good. And then I bought these uh, stitch markers by, oh wow, I just realized something. I was reading the little label with the address and stuff on it. This is from Fiber Circle Yarn. And they're these cute little stitch markers. They have, um, that's the Tower of Pisa, I think, on it, and the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, and there's the Big Ben in London, or the, the clock tower with ben, Big Ben in it. Yeah, there's just little, little pictures on them. I thought they were nice. They're kind of heavy, which is good sometimes. Yeah, so I got these stitch markers and they're, they're actually based in Farmersville, Texas, where I used to live, which I didn't realize. I lived there a really long time ago when I was a little kid. Um, but that's, that's a weird coincidence. Yeah. So got stitch markers, got some tags for my sweaters. Uh, so that was a good yarn buying day. <laughs> then, then I took a spinning class right after I had to like rush up from the south side of the city to just north of the city, um, to Edmond. Um, I went into a chick that knits and I went in there a couple weeks ago to buy some yarn. And then, um, I was talking to Tammy, who is the dyer, the main dyer there. And, um, 
I found out they were having a spinning class. So I went and did that. And the woman who taught the spinning class was actually the same woman who sold me my spinning wheel at Fiber Christmas, which was so weird. I didn't realize when I signed up for the class that it was her who was teaching it. So that was kind of cool. Um, and I actually spun some yarn. I was successful this time. I'd been having a lot of trouble and, uh, I think most of it was tension issues. So um, I I didn't know how to uh, calibrate the scotch tension the exact right way and the signs that it was off and all of that. But now I do, now I do. Here is a tiny little ball of uh, some of the yarn that I did. So this is single, the single ply. So what she had us do was she taught us some basic stuff and then she, gave us some fiber and we spun, just kept doing, kept going and kept going. And um, then she had us break that off and start another one. Um, we made a little ball and then um, we started another one and she gave us like different fibers to try. So we did a little bit of silk, a little bit of, uh, actually can't remember now what all she gave us to do, but it was to try to get a feeling, to feel how different all the different fibers felt, which was really helpful. And then she taught us how to ply and we plied it all together. So, oh no, I'm looking at this and I can't remember which one I did when. I think that this one yeah, so for actually first she had us put some yarn that was already spun and plied on there so we could just get a feeling of how the wheel pulled and um, how to feed it correctly and how to just how to get the basic movements of it. Um, and then we started spinning the fiber. So the green, she taught us how to ply. So the green bits are yarn, are the yarn that she hooked on there for us. And then um, all the other colorful bits are yarn that I spun, yay. And then after the class that evening, um, my friend Lily came over and she's also a beginner spinner. She has a little bit more time and experience than I do. Um, so she came over and we both sat in the living room with our spinning wheels and um, I did some more practice and some more playing. And then I did this. So I think it's pretty good for my my first real yarn. It's all right. I'm not gonna use it for anything. It's just gonna sit on my shelf and be the first yarn that I spun. So I'm pretty I'm pretty confident spinning now. I think I do need to, I have a speed issue. <laughs> I think I go too fast and um, Probably need to slow down a little bit more. But yeah, I got, I spun some yarn finally. Uh, and then she gave me, so this, the teacher and the, she's also an Ashford spin, spinning wheel dealer. Um, her name is Angora Jane and she also dyes fiber too. So she asked me if I, if she had given me a braid of fiber at the festival where I bought the wheel and I was like, no, I didn't know that that was a thing. She said, yeah, it comes with a braid of fiber. So that's awesome. And she had a box and she was like, well, since you didn't get one, um, dig in this box and pick one. So I picked this and she dyed it. Uh, her name is Angora Jane. She does a lot of like colors. I don't think there's a website on here, but I think if you look her up, so Angora, like Angora rabbits. So yeah, got that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this to practice on a little bit cause I'm, I'm not a lot of a color person. So uh, if I decide to do this, then I'll use it to practice on and I'll see what it looks like because um, that's the thing with spinning is it might look a lot different spun up then in the braid. Um, but if I don't like this, I'll just give it to Lily, I think. 
and she likes colorful, like super loud colors. So I might use this, I might not, we'll see. Um, but I can spin now, yay. Uh, okay, so <laughs> also from a chick that knits, um, I had gone in a couple weeks earlier. I made this little cat for my friend and I did it out of, oh gosh, I think it was a green that was the color ivy. And then um, there was this color, which is blossom. This is on fingering weight though. And the cat was done in DK. I just don't know where, I don't know where the remnants are. I had a lot of yarn left. I probably, um, they're right there. I had it stashed. So this is Ivy. This is Blossom. And I love this color. I'm usually not, like I just said, I don't usually like loud colors, but this color was just, oh, just amazing. It has pinks and greens in it. Yeah, so good. Um, some orange in there, peachy colors some gray, purple, it's just pretty, it's just so pretty. So I became obsessed with it. I made a cat, I'll, I'll have Daniel put a picture up in here. I made this cat for my friend and it was so cute. Um, her, her kid turned three, so I figured she would enjoy a super colorful stuffed cat. So that's what I made for her. Um, and then, then once I had started knitting with that, I was like, I need a sweater out of this. <laughs> so I went back in the shop and they actually didn't have any more because it sold out super quickly. I think she's doing new colors for maybe an advent box or something, but she's putting them out. I can't exactly remember. Um, but she didn't have any on fingering weight yarn um it, it gets hot here so I, I don't do a lot of heavy sweaters um that's why i do a lot of fingering weight sweaters uh so i wanted fingering weight to do a sweater so she kindly um dyed some up for me and i came, i came back the next week to get it so that is this i'm really excited to use this um, eventually. <laughs> uh, I also, when I was in there the first time, I bought some, I bought another sweater quantity. <laughs> Just because, you know, I was in there and I don't go out to yarn stores too often. And it, it's local and all of that. So I had seen I've been looking at people's mint green yarn and I'm kind of obsessed with it. Um, so I saw this and was like, well, I think I need to take that home. Um, so this one is called, what is it called? Lavender Fields and it's mint green and it has purple, flecks of purple in it. So eventually I'm gonna make a sweater out of this as well. I don't know which one yet. I thought maybe a weekender, but maybe I'll just do like a plain, a plain kind of sweater since it's with the colors. I don't know. We'll see. I think I am going to do a plain sweater with the blossom color though, because I also picked up some Surrey Alpaca while I was there. She was having a sale on her specialty yarn. And I thought, you know what I don't have a lot of is mohair or like fuzzy type yarn. It's so soft. <laughs> so this has 74% um, baby Surrey alpaca and 26% mulberry silk. So I got, I got two skeins when I was there that day and then I, when I went in another day, or I might've had Daniel go in, I got one more and I actually need to get a fourth one. So this is on the color Pearl. It's very shiny. 
in the light. <laughs> and on camera, it's not, it doesn't look this shiny in real life. Um, so I, I'm thinking that I will, I'm thinking I'll pair it with this blossom and I'll do just like a plain crew neck type sweater um, and see what it looks like with the Surrey Alpaca. See if it mutes the colors too much or if it kind of mellows them out a little bit more so that I'll be more apt to wear this sweater. I mean, I love this color and I love the way it knits up. So I think I will wear the sweater, but I'm kind of also a little bit trepidatious. Um, I don't know if that's a word, but I think it is. Uh, <laughs> I have a little bit of trepidation about it um, just because I don't wear bright colors that often. Um, I did try to pair this with um, some Shibui yarn that I had before, and that, that leads into another one of my whips. <laughs> Um, hold on a second. So I paired it with this big, I think I've showed this yarn before. This, uh, I think it's called Blue Skies. Oh wait, here's the band. It's Tosh Marina Light and it's a Madeline Tosh and Shibui Knits collaboration. And Oh, it's very sticky on the other side. Um, from their Colors from the Desert collection. And yeah, it's called Big Sky. So that's this color. It looks darker in person. So I tried to do like this with this one, but I felt that since it's such a special kind of you know, I don't buy Madeline Tosh that often. Um, and I wanted to make something special with this yarn. So um, I, I just couldn't pair it together. So so with this yarn, I'm making, um, I'm making this shirt that has an interesting construction. Um, you, I think it's called the Nicasio T and it has some cabling at the top and then um, it's kind of boxy and then it has some sleeves. Uh, but you knit it sideways. So instead of knitting, you know, it being bottom up or top down, you knit it from one side to the other. Um, so I, I started it. Oh. Make sure I'm not dropping stitches on this one my light. I call it my nerd light. <laughs> it goes around your neck. It's very helpful. Um, let's see it. There's the front. So I've did a little bit of cabling. That's the cable part. And then this is just stockinette that's curling on itself. So that's, that's all I've started on that one. And I'm not trying to get this done really fast either. I have too many whips and too much Christmas stuff to make. Um, I don't know why I started so many whips. I already have, and I also have like a Christmas sock thing that I'm doing, um, which is, I'm really far behind on. Um, yeah, too many whips, way too many. Um, I'll put the information about that shirt down below too. Uh, I can't, re I can't quite remember who the uh, designer is on that one, but I'll look it up. And also from a chick that knits, I went over there one day after work and um, I'm in this like chat group with some friends from a bigger group and we do a holiday gift exchange and um, I've started on that <laughs> as well. That has to be done by December 1st as be in the mail. So um, this is also from a chick that knits and it's the color Scotland. So it has a lot of like really pretty greens and blues and yellowish colors. And I'm knitting the full circle cowl from Andrea Mallory again. Um, 
and it has some cables on it and everyone, I looked at the projects on Ravelry and pretty much everyone is knitting like solid colors, but I just really wanted to use this colorway. I th I've been looking at it for a while and I thought it was just so pretty. So here's the, this one has more yellow in it than the other ones. So I'm doing two at a time. Not two at once, but I'm alternating skeins. So this cowl has um, a cable pattern on it. Is that the front? Yes, maybe. I actually can't tell. Yeah, I think this is the front. <laughs> um, it has this really cool, yeah, you can kind of see it cable pattern on it and then this color is just so pretty so I'm knitting on that I have one repeat done of the um chart and then there are 12 repeats in the chart so but I've done one and I didn't work on it for that long um so that should go pretty quickly when I decide to do it I think I have a lot of weekends of focusing on one project ahead of me. So maybe next weekend I'll make a pair of socks and maybe I'll finish the two that are three quarters of the way done. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I think I really need to focus on, you know, today I'm working on this project and tomorrow I'm working on this other one. And, you know, this one goes to work with me. So it's in a clear bag and, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so one other thing I did was, I don't even remember what day it was, uh, a woman from my knitting group messaged us and said that Yarnatopia had this yarn on sale and it was 50% off. So bought some more yarn. <laughs> so I've been watching uh, Heather and Hops a uh, cat from Heather and Hops for a while. And I, I just love like everything she does. And she knit this shawl for her wedding. And it's so pretty. It has thistles on it too. And a few other things. And I, I saw it in a couple of her vlogs and I was like, that is a cute shawl. Like maybe I need to make that. Um, and she, she finally released the pattern for it. So when my friend texted us and said, oh, um, this yarn called Sunday Knits is on sale half off at Yarnatopia, I was like, well, I guess I'm buying some yarn. Um, so I bought the Sunday Knits in the Angelic um, base. So it is 75% Merino and 25% Angora. And it's it's a little bit fuzzy. There's a little bit of a halo. It's super soft. <laughs> um, so I got, since that sweater is like a color work sweater and it's kind of Scotland inspired um, because Kat and her husband got married in Scotland. Um, I saw these colors and thought these are gonna, these are perfect. So these are the colors I'm using. Oh, hold on. Sorry about all the rustling. These are the colors that I'm using for the shawl. Um, uh oh. So for the the like main color, I got four of these skeins. Um, this is the color bone. It's just a really nice creamy color. And then this is ah, where'd it go? Oh, this is Dijon, Dijon, Dijon. Uh, so it's really pretty mustardy yellow. Then this is teal. So it's just, just a teal. It looks deeper in, in, in person. It looks deeper, deeper blue, not as light. And then this one is plum, which is very much like the, uh, Oh, I didn't even tell you guys what colors those were for my hat. 
The colors are diamond and, hold on, sorry. Diamond and precious. So precious is the um, dark purple plummy color. And then diamond is the grayish, brownish gray color. And then, so this one is also a plum color, but this one is called plum. And then this one is uh, called Fair Isle. And it's a really pretty deep green. It's coming out a little bit more blue on the camera, but it's it's kind of like a, a huntery green color. So yeah, I'm super excited about that, but I'm I'm not allowed to start that until until I get all these Christmas projects done, at least, at least the cowl and um, all of the socks that I have to knit. Um, I think I have like at least four more pairs to do, five more pairs. Um, but some of them I'm going to do a more plain sock and uh, put a picture, like a color work picture on it. And then some of them I've done, I've done some more intricate like cabling and stuff like that. So, but I really need to, that's what I, I really need to focus on that and the cowl and get those knocked out. Hopefully by, I'll say the end of November. <laughs> so yeah, I have a lot of whips going, a lot of yarn that I bought um, the the rest of my 316 <laughs> dye studio yarn will come eventually. Uh, I'm just glad that I had like what I needed to start the project. So yeah, I, sorry, this is all a lot, but I have, I, I just had so many whips going and had bought way too, way too much yarn. <laughs> so yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I hope that you're having a good week and looking forward to fall and, uh, yeah, that's all I have for today. Um, wash your hands, make good decisions, wear your mask. <laughs> Happy knitting. Bye. <laughs>